Tesla drops the price on the Model S for the second time in one week, mainly driven by sex, drugs, and even more scandalous social taboo, Lucid Motors. What did Lucid Motors do to force Elon Musk's hand? I'll tell you along with Inside EV's contributor Tom Malogny, and we will hear from Lucid CEO himself, Peter Rawlinson. While dropping the price, Tesla also has upped the range of all of their models and released what people are calling a refresh of the Model 3. Byton, remember them? Their CEO is leaving as the company is trying to find a new life. Fisker finally picks the place where they will be making their SUV Ocean. We will hear what a $2.1 million electric hypercar sounds like on a racetrack. Karma Automotive all-electric sedan is coming next year with a surprising new price tag. Spoiler alert, it is less than $2.1 million. And GM gets a green light to let their driverless cars run around San Francisco with absolutely no one inside at all. All of this is coming up next. Ooh, welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here, welcome and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, let's start with our top story, which is the delicious feud between Tesla and Lucid. And we will start with Lucid that has unveiled the starting price of their entry model that's coming in early 2022. And it's just under $70,000 after the tax rebate here in the United States of $7,500. Surprisingly, it has a pretty decent range of over 400 miles. And let me remind you that the first Lucid Air, the Dream Edition that's going to market in spring of the next year is priced at $170 thousand dollars now that's a pretty big difference between the top of the line model and the entry level model not that i am complaining but when i talked to peter rollison the lucid motors ceo only a few weeks ago he didn't make it sound like it was going to be that much lower than a hundred thousand dollars again i am not complaining but it's my ambition and vision to get the price of a lucid air sub one hundred thousand uh, dollars within a year of production so early 22. okay so obviously that price actually came in under what the tesla model s was starting at and that did not sit very well with elon musk but alex you're probably asking tesla just dropped the price of the model s earlier in the week by three thousand dollars right right but they did not stop Elon from dropping the Model S price for the second time in one week just so he can come in under the 69900 the starting price of the Lucid Air. And not just any price, but the one that has both sexual and drug enduendos in them at $69,420. That's right, $69,420. Now, that triggered some concerns from a couple of different groups within the Tesla community. The first one are the buyers of the Tesla Model S, people who bought it in the last few days, weeks, and months, who realized that the value of their car has been depreciated twice in one week, and obviously they weren't very happy about it. And the second one that basically pointed out that every time you try to compete on price, you already lost, and that's not a good look for Tesla. So what does this mean for both brands? For more, we turn to the Inside EVs contributor Tom Malogny. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Candy America. Check out the most affordable electric car in the United States, the K27 for under $10,000 after the federal tax credit and their second model, K23 for under 20. Delivery starts soon, so reserve yours with just $100 by using the link in the description of this video. And newer charge, already have a 240 volt outlet, but want to charge two electric cars or maybe split it between a car and an appliance without spending tons of money on an electrician? Check out the new charge, your plug and play solution. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. All right, Tom, so Lucid is with pretty aggressive starting price for their entry model. Now, do you think this actually puts them in the mix to compete with the luxury brands like Mercedes, Audi, BMW, and so forth, and maybe take it out of the exotic car, $170,000 type of a deal category? Yeah, absolutely, Alex. You know, the, the, 
the um, Dream Edition Air is a fantastic vehicle. I think nobody can really argue that, but it's out of the price range of most people. Uh, even the base air that we're seeing now is expensive, but there's there that, that's a solid market for the luxury category in around that sixty seventy thousand dollar market. So I think they brought it down to where they had to to compete not only with Tesla but with the Lexuses, the BMWs, the Audis that kind of play in that space. All right. Well, now. Let's talk about Elon's tweet. Do you think this essentially is putting Lucid on a map as a real competitor, despite that they haven't produced a car yet? Um, and do you think this is a good thing for, for Tesla, actually, and Tesla drivers and fans? Well, yeah, you know, competition is good. And, uh, you know, I think it's good for both Tesla and Lucid. It's certainly good for Lucid to have the uh, big brand, you know, the big... The, 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 the real standard in electric vehicles reacting to what they're doing. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good for both. It's great for Tesla customers. Look at what's gone on. While we don't know for certain if the price reductions on the Model S were directly related to Lucid because Tesla hasn't come out and said that it was, they kind of hinted it was, it's pretty obvious that that's why they're doing that now. And uh, yeah, Tesla customers get the win. Uh, the Model S is a great vehicle, but um, I think this price adjustment um, definitely is is warranted. Well, let's talk about that because, you know, this is kind of the second time they did it within the week. Uh, and of course, every time they do this, just have a price drop for kind of no reason. Uh, there's, you know, a good uh, number of Tesla buyers who have just recently purchased that model, in this case, Model S, say, hey, wait a second, you just you just decreased the value of my car overnight. Um, do you think they once again have a legitimate concern or do you think this is kind of overdue at this point? You know, um, when I bought my Model 3 a couple months later, Tesla had a price reduction. I didn't complain about it. You know, um, would I have preferred to get it for less? Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's the market and that's Tesla. Uh, it happens all the time with tech. You know, you could go out and buy a TV and next month it's $200 less. Tesla is more tech than car and that's how they play the game. And they do frequent price reductions, increases, software updates. You know, all of a sudden the car is better. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that's you, you can't really c c complain about it. That's that's the nature of the beast. They change it a little bit more than, say, traditional automakers do. The price fluctuates more than what you'll see from the legacy brands. But, you know, you're still getting a great car. And uh, if you're paying a little bit more than the guys paying a month after you, you really shouldn't complain about it. Well, now that Model S is, uh, you know, starting under 70000 uh, do you think this is also uh, sort of fair? Because they haven't had a refresh in a while. And a lot of people are going, you know, for Model Three model Y, which you know is much cheaper. Um, do you think this is something that makes the Model S price more competitive because it hasn't been updated as much as the other models? I think it was really necessary, Alex. Whether or not Lucid came along, you know, Model Three and Model Y uh, sales have just really cannibalized uh, Model S and Model X particularly Model S, you know, that for a little while, you could get a base Model 3 for exactly half of what the base Model S cost. And, uh, you know, it wasn't twice as good a car. So, you know, Tesla needed to do this. The Model S has been around for nine years or so now. Uh, it's still a great car, which that in itself is amazing that it's, it's like nine years old and it's still a cutting edge great car. But when Tesla rolled out the Model 3 and the Model Y, they almost made those cars too good a value. And it makes the Model S look like a bad value at 75,000. Now that they brought that price slightly under 70,000, it, it makes it a lot more competitive. And I could see why people might go for that extra money for the Model S now, um, more so than they would before when, you know, the, the the, the gap between the three and the S was just too great. And you didn't get that much more car for that. 
If you want to hear more from Tom, he's got his own YouTube channel. Who doesn't nowadays? I put a link to it in the description of this video. But for now, let's move on to another big Tesla story. And we are talking about the Tesla Model 3 refresh and the range increase for all Tesla models. I know people are calling it a refresh, but Elon Musk told us a long time ago that there is no such a thing as a full refresh when it comes to Tesla. So this is more like a new feature bundle release. And this includes the new range increase to 353 miles. That's 30 new miles added. That's pretty impressive. And all other versions of the Model 3 got it as well. It will also have a heat pump which will boost your actual real world range. It will also have a quicker acceleration with the performance version doing zero to 60 in just 3.1 seconds. It will also have a power trunk. I completely forgot Tesla Model 3 does not have a power trunk until now. A new center console, which I know a lot of people are excited about, two versions of the new aerodynamic wheels and a blackout exterior trim, which we usually call a Chrome Delete. So definitely a big upgrade for the Model 3, but the rest of the lineup is also getting a boost in range. As you remember earlier this year, the Model S long range got a boost of its range to 402 miles. This time, the Model S performance with 19-inch wheels is getting a boost of 39 miles, pretty impressive, to a total of 387. Model X long range is getting a boost of 20 miles to 371, and the performance version is adding 36 miles for the total of 341. Both are for the 20-inch wheel versions. And let's not forget about the Model Y. The long range version with the 19 inch wheels is getting a boost of 10 miles to a total of 326. All other variations and wheel sizes are also getting a boost in range. You can check it out at tesla.com. But while we weren't looking, Tesla did something that a lot of people are not very cool with because they took away the seven day return policy. As a matter of fact, you used to be able to keep it for even eight days as long as you do it in a good faith, which I can only assume uh, if you were like too drunk to drive back from Vegas, right? Let's move on to another exciting story and we're going to be talking about Biden. Remember them? My first love in the electric car industry? Well, they are trying to revive the company in China and their CEO, Daniel Kirchert, is leaving the company. Now, I gotta say, I'm not really that surprised because as I was kind of investigating how in the world this very promising startup with its own factory all of a sudden just kind of stopped to exist, I realized that a lot of it was bad management, so I don't blame them from trying to start from a new slate. As you remember, Byton has paused their operations in China for six months and closed their operations altogether in Europe and the United States. This is the footage that was taken a couple of days ago in the former Byton headquarters in Santa Clara, California. Now, I really do hope that they bring the Ambyte to life, even though it's probably just going to be in China. Though I have to say, once again, after investigating of what happened, I realized that that car is still at least at least one year away from production. Let's move on to another startup that literally had the opposite chances of Byton, which most people believe they were not going to make it. But this week, they have finally partnered up with the auto manufacturer where they will be making their car. I'm talking about Fisker and their all-electric SUV, Ocean. Fisker is partnering up with Magna, which is the largest auto part manufacturer in North America, with clients like General Motors, Ford, BMW, Volkswagen, and even Tesla. They will also be building the canoe cars as well. Magna will own up to 6% of Fisker and essentially will be their third party manufacturer. I know originally Henrik Fisker has tweeted out several times that Fisker will be using the Volkswagen's MEB platform, but apparently those plans have changed and now it's also going to be Magna that is going to be providing the EV architecture as well. Now, I don't know how many features are going to be added or subtracted from what was promised to us earlier this year as Ocean was unveiled at the CES, but one feature I hope is going to be there because, you know, Hendrik promised me. So what we have in here is a head-up display 
where we actually are going to be able to project up the lyrics of your favorite song. So as you drive down the street, you can do karaoke on the way to work and really practice your singing. Not something that's going to work for me, I'm afraid, but maybe some other people out there. Fisker is going to become a publicly traded company at the end of this month via a reverse merger and the Ocean SUV will go in production in a couple of years. One of many awesome electric cars that are coming to the market next year is Lotus Evaya, which I'm sure all of you have reservations for. It is a monster 2000 horsepower hypercar with a price tag of $2.1 million and Lotus finally took it out to a racetrack at a Goodwood Speed Week and it was its first public appearance. Check out the sound of this car as it makes its way through the racetrack. It sounds pretty quiet for a race car, but I bet in another 10 years, we'll be like, oh my God, what's wrong with this car? Something wrong with the motor? Because these cars are gonna get even more quieter as they will get faster. Did I just say more quieter? Well, at least I have an excuse. English is a second language. Now, let me remind you that this car will go zero to 60 in less than three seconds. And interestingly enough, it will have 800 kilowatt max charging rate which I really don't know where it's gonna happen because Ionity and Electrify America cap out at 350. Let's move on to another electric car that's coming out next year. And this time it's all electric, this time around, Karma Rivera, which used to be Fisker Karma before the split. But it's not even the all electric version debut that's making the news here. It's the starting price of just under $80,000. That's actually quite surprising because the current version of the plug-in hybrid Rivera starts at 130. According to their website, it will have a range of 300 miles on a 110 kilowatt hour battery with a zero to 60 spec at fast enough. What? What does that mean? Try this type of talk with your wife or your girlfriend. Oh, honey, you're pretty enough. If Karma Automotive was the husband and us, uh, the potential buying audience, was the wife, Karma would be sleeping on the couch tonight. All right, I hope they let us know what it is pretty soon. But look, finally, the original, what in the beginning used to be Fisker Karma that was trying to compete with the Model S, finally can. It's going to be all electric, it's going to have a decent range, and it will be priced similarly. As you guys know, I welcome the competition. I've been waiting for the year like 2021 for a long time, and I hope it's going to be a really, really good year for the electric cars. GM Cruise is finally getting a green light from the California officials to let their bolts run around San Francisco, California with absolutely no adult supervision. By that, I mean there will be no backup driver in those cars, and it will get interesting. Now, GM Cruise is not going to be the first company that's going to be allowed to have their vehicles with absolutely no drivers inside. Waymo has been doing it for a while, but they were doing it in Phoenix, Arizona. San Francisco is much, much harder place to navigate because of the fog, the smog from the fires, you know, trying to go around the homeless people pooping on the street, and of course, looking for cheap $40 parking. Speaking of the smoke coming from the fires, apparently some of those fires are coming from the Chevy Bolts themselves. That's right, NHTSA is launching the investigation into spontaneous fires of some of those unattended Chevy Bolts. Obviously, it's going to take a while. I will definitely keep you updated. I was recently able to hang out in one of those GM cruise vehicles when I visited GM in Detroit back in March, and I got to tell you, it's pretty weird to sit in a car with absolutely no steering wheel, but I love what the future is going to hold for us. As I mentioned before, I am very excited about the next year, 2021. There will be a lot of great electric cars coming to the market. Finally, I have recently put out a video about the Tesla Model Y alternatives. In other words, all electric crossovers or compact SUVs that are coming on the market next year. Check it out. I put a link in the description of this video and you can also look at it up there. The link should be right there in that corner. I'm looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.